Hey, my name's Andrew Pika. I've been a contributor with Loop Community for almost seven years, I think, now. Uh, I'm here on the road on the All In Tour with uh, Jordan Feliz. We're opening up for Mr. Matthew West. We're about over halfway done. We've done 20 plus shows at this point. Uh, I wanted to just give you a quick little run through of our track rig here. It's pretty, it's super streamlined, super simple. Uh, what we got here is a two space rack. Uh, we got just a power conditioner, and then we are using the Focusrite Claret Pre 8. Um, it's a Thunderbolt interface. On the back, you can see here, we got the quarter inch. We got ourselves a nice loom here, quarter inch loom going from all the outs into the snake. Uh, the last one, the last two channels are Simpty lines for lighting. So one goes into the snake, which is running back to the board, which our lighting guy, Caesar. Um, puts into the board back there and then actually the other Simpty line goes to this massive LED sign we have here um, and is triggering that as well um, but that's all Simpty so that's not actually MIDI triggering going on in here um, yeah honestly I have a <laughs> I have a video from uh, oh my gosh probably five years ago where I was playing with a worship band and I walk through this, and it's on Loop Community's uh, YouTube page, and my session looks exactly the same as it did five years ago. If anything, it's actually probably simpler. Uh, and the way I run Ableton is, is this session arrangement view? That, was, that right? one is session. So we run it in session view. Uh, on our master channel, we have all our songs, and on this tour, Literally, we have one session that we use every single night because our set is not changing. So we have our intro, and then we just play uh, six songs, um, one right after the other. We actually have intros and little like loop pads built into the track itself to keep us, because we only have 25 minutes, and so we have to be on 25 minutes every time. So when I play these one after the other, it's a fail-safe way to make sure we don't go over. So there's an Literally the entire time, I'm just hitting enter onto the next one as soon as um, as soon as the track ends. We've got our friend Looptimus running here, and uh, we use Looptimus in the most simple way possible. Meaning, as I said, we all I need to do is press start and stop, and so I have it set up that I actually put it this way, and this is start and this is stop. Um, and I put that next to my right foot over there. So I hit that one. It'll trigger the track. Arm the next one. I can stop it. Start that one. Trigger it. So super little over. <laughs> Looptimus does a little bit more than that, I know, but that's how we're using it. And uh, yeah, uh, we bounce. We send out our tracks in groups. Uh, the way we do it is um, output one is click. Output two, we have like a sub bass. Uh, three and four are stereo backing vocals uh, straight from the record, which now you can buy Loop Community. Uh, and then five and six are stereo stack tracks, so pretty much everything else um, that we don't play live. So there's a lot of, we're just a five piece, so a lot of the synths and stuff are on there. And then, um, like I said, seven and eight are those Simpty lines for lights. So those are the tracks one through six that our um, sound guy Q has to work with and mix with back there. And so if there's something within the instrument track that he wants to adjust, um, we actually edit that clip specifically within Ableton and that's how we kind of fine tune our mix. So that keeps it really simple. I know we could probably do, um, we could do even more, well actually the Pre-8 only has eight outputs, so that's about all we can do <laughs> at this point, but um, it's super simple, super streamlined, and uh, it's been pretty fail-safe to this point. So with Jordan Feliz, I don't know if you've heard any of his music, but he's more, very much more on the pop side of things, and I think this is a pretty common problem, or not problem, but obstacle for a lot of bands, especially even in the worship realm, in which um, 
we are kind of the band is growing we're getting better shows and everything but we're at this point where we're still just a five piece and we're not able to bring out any more people on the road at this point and so Jordan is writing these amazing songs that are very produced and have these massive sounds on them and we're just we just can't recreate that live at this point we just don't have the personnel to be able to do it so we have to use tracks and I believe that there's this sweet balance of not always just taking live tracks and doing the karaoke thing and just singing up on it but there's this nice mix of blending live instruments with the re recorded synth sounds and um, samples and stuff so as a drummer me personally this is pretty interesting because on Jordan's last album on his first album I think there's only one song that actually has real recorded drums on it otherwise everything is programmed and it's all samples or you know hand claps and all kinds of stuff so for me I need to figure out have I've had to try to figure out a way to take that and to translate it live while keeping the vibe and the overall feel of the song but also like how do we how am I supposed to add an extra layer because when people come to see a show they come for an experience and to how to get that to translate um, yeah how to get that to translate live so that's where tracks come in handy that's where sample pads come in handy so I can just show you really quickly I use an old-school vintage Rogers kit actually from somewhere in between 70 and 75 and it's just super super simple um, just two toms a 22 kick and a snare and what I've added is the Roland SPD SX sample pad over here mounted and off the trigger output of that I have a little side snare that I mount off my uh, my hi-hat over here and so this guy just triggers sounds from this guy and this is just a stereo out that goes to the board completely separate um, like another instrument on the stage and so when Jordan when we were getting ready to tour Jordan's album we went to his producer and I listened through the tracks so I was like hey can I get this clap sound from this song can I get this tom sound and so I listened through and I chose sounds that I knew that I could play live and so he would give me those um, you know you dropbox them to me I would take them put them onto the SPD and so there are certain songs where there is no snare drum for like the verse it's just a hand clap so I have that on this trigger and so I get to still play that um, electronic sound and there's a song where the bridge has like a marching snare sound and not like a, a big fat snare drum sound so I put that marching snare sound on this guy and I move over to that so I'm still playing it live and it still has that feel and people can still see that I'm playing it live but um, it's just being it's just uh, samples being triggered uh, I got some like tom sounds that come off this guy really big sub bass sounds that are played off this but stuff that allows me to actually like play it live um, stuff that I can't necessarily recreate with an acoustic kit and so First and foremost, listen to that, and we also think about our other instruments, like what our guitar player can translate from the album, um, what our keys and acoustic player, it's kind of amazing sometimes what synth parts can actually be covered in um, an electric guitar now with pedals and stuff. And so everything else that we can't, we use tracks for. And, um, and in here, we kind of gotten, we break them out as much as possible, you'll see that we have percussion one two three four percussion effects drum loops um, not every single song uses all of these channels but some of them do and basically when our producer gives us the stems we listen through and and hear what I'm not able to recreate or what another uh, musician on stage is able to recreate and we or what's necessary to recreate what's what do we need to actually put into the track that would actually add something? Um, and all these percussion tracks are going out the same output, seven and eight. So they're all mixed together at this output, at um, output seven and eight. And so if we need to actually fine tune like the hand claps on this song, I can double click on the clip and actually adjust the, the clip itself 
and mix it in that way and kind of fine tune things um, going back and forth with our sound guy. But yeah, so that's helped us to really become intentional about the way we do things. And I think it's really important to take time to wrestle through that stuff because there's, <laughs> one, we don't want to ever be caught high and dry if something happens with our tracks and they go on. We don't run a redundant rig right now um, simply because we don't want to carry that much stuff with us and um, we don't have the budget to buy a second computer at this point. So uh, if something were to happen that all of a sudden everything would be gone from the live, but we could actually keep playing and actually get through a show and it would be all right. Um, so we try to keep that in mind, that we never want to be so track dependent that if something were to happen with them, that we're just done and frozen. Um, we, we just treat it as like another, kind of like another instrument, as a, as a filler to do what we can't do um, with the instruments we have on stage. Cool. So that's how we run tracks with Jordan Feliz. You can actually get the stems that we use at Loop Community. Loop Community started partnering with labels and they can actually they actually have the record quality stems which is exactly what we're using live that you can buy and use on your own so go check out Jordan Feliz on iTunes and Spotify but then go to Loop Community check out the the tracks they got there and start playing some of his music live at your church or at your concerts or whatever <laughs>